for joining us for this uh, event. May I now request uh, the High Commissioner, uh, Shri Ajay Bisarya, to kindly address us with his opening welcome address. Sir. Namaskar, uh, good evening and uh, good morning. Uh, late Shri K.S. Pillai's family members, uh, daughter uh, Radha Pillai ji and sons K.S. and Sankara Pillai, thank you so much for joining us. Your presence makes this event very, very special. Uh, Ambassador T.P. Srinivas, uh, Srinivasan, who uh, is the driving force behind reviving the memory of uh, late Shri Pillai, Foreign Secretary Harsh Shingla, uh, who will later join us with a message, IFS Association Secretary uh, Gloria Gangte, colleagues from the Indian Foreign Service, both past and present, joining us today from different parts of the world, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very, very special uh, commemoration event. 60 years ago today, a shot was fired here in this city of Ottawa that cut short a life of great promise. We lost a young idealist, a patriot, uh, from the first batch of the Indian Foreign Service who was serving his country in Canada. For us, uh, this is uh, both a solemn and uh, a satisfying occasion uh, because we meet to remember the first martyr of the Indian Foreign Service. That makes it a very solemn occasion. Uh, he gave up his life in the line of duty, uh, but it's also satisfying because we are finally uh, creating a permanent memory uh, for him in Ottawa. We are also grateful uh, to have not just the family of Sri Pillai here with us, but also so many members of his extended family, which is the Indian Foreign Service. Most of us uh, who are his successors in the Indian Foreign Service uh, serving today were born after uh, the event happened on this day. It's been 60 years and most of us would have, uh, those who were born before would have retired. But uh, it is nevertheless such an important uh, occasion for us to remember and commemorate. Uh, the stimulus, of course, for this event came from Ambassador uh, Srinivasan's posted uh, message in the Google group of the Indian Foreign Service where he revived the memory this amazing story of uh, uh, Sri Pillai uh, 60 years ago. And uh, it was something that uh, really uh, touched us all. Uh, for us here in Ottawa, we tried to see the, uh, uh, the uh, record. And uh, we found that there was not too much going in, uh, in the records that we had here. We only had some administrative correspondence about this event. Now, I'm sure there would have been memorials, but there was no memory. And we decided uh, to make amends uh, so that uh, we could remind, re uh, revive this memory of uh, Sri uh, K. S. Pillai's sacrifice at uh, uh, 60 years ago. So this is not just an act of re remembrance, it is also an act of redemption because we wanted uh, that memory that did not uh, exist in Ottawa to be something which becomes more permanent, which could be remembered by all succeeding generations of the Indian Foreign Service. Now, 60 years ago, when the world was still very innocent, uh, we got a tragic reminder that uh, serving India abroad is not all about glamour, but also carries several risks uh, which, uh, which also, uh, you know, dog us today. Uh, over the years, India's stature has grown in multiple ways, and so has the vulner vulnerability of its diplomatic representations and its diplomats abroad, and particularly in stations where India is seen as an adversary. One of the saddest moments for me in the uh, Indian Foreign Service was in 2008, when uh, one of our colleagues, Venkat, was killed in Kabul, and I attended the memorial in, um, in New Delhi. Uh, v. Venkateshwar Rao was from the 1990 batch of the Indian Foreign Service, and he was killed in a bomb attack in Kabul. And when I attended the prayer meeting 
of uh, for Venkat, I was not aware of this story of uh, of uh, uh, Shipille. So this is in many ways an attempt to get us to know the history and to remember this very special man on this very special day. I would once again uh, like to welcome all participants in, in this event, particularly Sri Pillai's family. And mm -hmm. we hope to hear later uh, from Ambassador Srinivasan uh, on what is happening. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we now will have a screening of a video montage that we have created for uh, in memory of uh, Sri Pillai, uh, his life and the tragic events that led up to his death. Uh, so please join us uh, in this homageful video. McLaren Street, Ottawa. A young officer by the name of Kukit Sankara Pillai had just finished his lunch and was preparing to draft a dispatch on Canada's approach to the ongoing Cuban crisis. He was surprised to see a visitor barge into the room, thinking that the person had come for some urgent work. A.S., as his friends fondly called him, got up to greet the man. The man produced a rifle and shot KS point blank. Kokat Sankara Pillai was born in the village of Karyukulam in what is now the Alpazwa district of Kerala in the well-regarded Kokat family. Pillai was educated at the University College Trivandrum and after completing his master's, he began teaching there. Pillai was soon preparing for the prestigious Union Public Service exams that Independent India had just started to recruit civil servants to its most elite services, that is, IFS and the IAS. Pillai cleared the civil services examination and after being interviewed, by none other than the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, who made it a habit of interviewing all prospective IFS candidates. He was accepted into the newly constituted Indian Foreign Services in 1948, the first batch of the IFS. Pillai served in the Indian Embassy in Paris and Indian High Commission in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Before taking up an assignment in the High Commission of India, Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. He also served in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi, before proceeding on assignment to Ottawa, Canada. Pillai's death came as a shock to everyone. His assailant, a Yugoslav immigrant by the name of Shani Farizi, had sought a visa to India, a request that had been rejected by a consular officer. Ferizi, upset at the rejection, had come to the chancery to shoot the consular officer, but had instead shot Pillai. The attacker walked out of the chancery building without being challenged and later surrendered himself at a nearby police station. He was never tried, but was sent to a mental asylum for several years. Pillai's death shocked the nation. The then Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, expressed deep regret at the death of a distinguished younger member of the Foreign Service. Pandit Nehru had read out a report of the then High Commissioner of India in Ottawa in the Parliament. We are all shocked at the tragic end of a brilliant officer. The shock will be terrible for his wife who is expecting a baby. 
Bilai left behind two young children and a pregnant wife. While his village and his native Kerala mourned his death, he also became an inspiration for a new generation from the region who sought to emulate him and went on to join the Indian Foreign Service. Over the years, Pillai's death was reduced to a mere anecdote with no fitting memorial to his sacrifice. The High Commission of India in Ottawa decided to commemorate Pillai's sacrifice as the first martyr from the Indian Foreign Service. A present High Commissioner of India to Canada, Ajay Bisaria, took the initiative to have the High Commission's Consular Waiting Hall named after K.S. Pillai. A sapling has also been planted in his memory on the Chancery premises. Kokat Sankara Pillai fell in the prime of his life to the cruel bullets of an assassin. It was a terrible loss for his family, for the Indian Foreign Service and for the Indian nation. His legacy and memory will live on and shall continue to inspire those who serve the nation in distant lands. We now uh, have a message from the Foreign Secretary, uh, Shri Harshwardhan Shringla, on this occasion. And uh, I you know, ask you to request you to join us for the message from the Foreign Secretary. Radha Pillay, daughter of Shri K. Shankar Pillay, Ambassador T.P. Srinivasan, High Commissioner Ajay Bisarya, colleagues and friends. We are gathered here to commemorate the sacrifice of Sri K. Shankar Pillai, Indian Foreign Service Officer of the 1948 batch, who was martyred on this day 60 years ago while serving as First Secretary in our High Commission in Ottawa. It is fitting that we pay tribute to our senior colleague, whose brilliant career was by a tragic incident, leaving behind a grieving family. The killing was utterly senseless, the work of a mentally deranged individual who sought revenge because his visa application had earlier been rejected. One can only imagine the grief and pain Sri Pillay's passing caused to his family. It certainly shocked the nation and the Foreign Service fraternity in India at that time. But it also left behind a legacy that, that continues to inspire young diplomats today. It defines the character and strength of the Indian Foreign Service and underlines its dedication to the service of the nation. Officers of the Ministry of External Affairs are posted in countries all over the world with varying degrees of comfort, amenities and situations. Some of these countries offer stable systems and a relatively smooth and trouble-free existence. At the same time, what is not very well known is that many of our stations of postings come with certain levels of hardship and discomfort. This is besides the constant of being away from home and extended family and the need to adapt to cultures and systems unfamiliar to us. In the course of our careers, we also invariably undergo postings in truly difficult stations on the edges of conflict and instability where violent crimes and terrorism are regular threats. I recall my own stay in Israel when bombings in public places close to our residence were a regular feature. In more recent times, my experience in Dhaka, where some of our colleagues narrowly escaped becoming victims of the Holy Bakery terrorist attack, comes to mind. This took the lives of dozens of people, including a young Indian girl whose parents literally wept on my shoulders. A safe and secure environment is a fundamental requirement for diplomats to work effectively and carry out their primary responsibility to uphold peace and promote friendship and better understanding between the nation they represent and the nation that hosts them. 
The person and property of the embassy are therefore considered inviolable, immune and protected, not only in times of peace, but even during a war. The 1963 Vienna Convention on Consular Relations refers to the security of the consular premises and consular officers and enjoins the receiving state to take all appropriate steps to protect them. Notwithstanding consular and treaty obligations, the life of a diplomat has always been fraught with risks. Lord Krishna was threatened with imprisonment when he went as an ambassador to plead the case of the Pandavas in the Kaurav court. Gaius Fulnicius, a Roman envoy to Fidnei, was killed in 438 BC on the orders of Lars Ptolemaeus. In more recent times, our colleague V. Venkat Rao was killed in a terrorist attack in Kabul in 2008. Venkat and I have worked closely together on a number of occasions, including when he was with me in the Northern Division in the Ministry. In 1984, the year I joined service, Ravindra Matri, our consul in Birmingham at that time, was kidnapped and killed by a terrorist outfit. History is replete with examples of embassies and envoys being attacked and threatened. The senseless killing of Sri Pillai and the 1984 and 2008 terrorist attacks, which resulted in the deaths of our fellow officers, highlight a serious concern for the security of diplomatic missions and graphically demonstrate the vulnerability of diplomats and diplomatic premises. These unfortunate incidents illustrate that diplomatic and consular relations are often conducted in an environment of grave security risk to the personnel and property of diplomatic and consular missions throughout the world. For India, as our global stature rises and our global footprint increases, the threat to our diplomats will commensurately go up. Our government is acutely conscious of the need to provide a secure work environment to our diplomats and missions abroad. We have continuously invested in enhancing the physical security features of our missions and consulates, and we proactively engage with host governments to ensure the security of our diplomatic personnel and premises in their jurisdiction. In recent years, in many stations, especially in our neighborhood, we have sought recourse to our own robust security arrangements. The recognition of the sacrifice made by Sri K. Shankar Pillai was long overdue, and I give our High Commissioner and mission in Ottawa full credit for taking this initiative to present the story of his supreme sacrifice to a larger audience. It is befitting that the Consular Waiting Hall in our High Commission's Chancery in Ottawa is being named after Sri Pillai. On behalf of all the officers of the Ministry of External Affairs and on behalf of the Indian Foreign Service Association, I convey my most sincere, sincere condolences to Radha Pillai and family members of Sri Shankar Pillai and join them in, this, in their grief. I also call on our young Foreign Service colleagues to take inspiration from the life and sacrifice of Sri Pillai. I will ask our IFS Association to put out information of Sri Pillai's life and times and his contribution in the service of our nation. Sri Pillai will be continued to be remembered and cherished by the IFS fraternity and his sacrifice and dedication to duty will forever be remembered. Jai Hind! Uh, thank you, sir, for that inspiring tribute. Uh, uh, we are also informed that uh, due to some technical difficulties, our Facebook live feed is uh, being affected, uh, but we'll be putting out a recorded uh, video on the Facebook, so colleagues who are joining through the Facebook can watch the events later. Uh, one of the people who was inspired by the life of uh, Shrikeyas Pillai was our former colleague, illustrious ambassador T.P. Srinivasan. Uh, in fact, it was his writing uh, which uh, led to us discovering uh, much of the material and, and the story about Sri Pillai's sacrifice. I now call upon Ambassador Tripi Srinivasan to kindly address the gathering. Sir, if you could unmute yourself, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Distinguished Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla. High Commissioner Ajay Bisaria, 
members of the IFS Association, the children of Sri Shankar Pillai, distinguished guests and friends. This is a poignant moment when we atone for a historic wrong done to a member of the first batch of the Indian Foreign Service who fell to an assassin's bullet at his working desk. He was left unsung, unrecognized and unremembered for 60 years. Today, thanks to the thoughtful initiative of High Commissioner Rajay Visaria and his colleagues, we meet to honor the first martyr among us. Apart from this webinar to recall his short but brilliant career, we will witness the naming of the Consular Hall of the High Commission as K. Shankarapillai Hall, the installation of a plaque and planting of a tree to perpetuate his memory. This ceremony is also a tribute to our colleagues who have laid down their lives in the line of duty and others, as the Foreign Secretary said, who are working in the different corners of a turbulent world, facing real dangers of upheavals, terrorism and war. The circumstances of the assassination were never fully investigated to reveal any security breach or conspiracy. For a man to walk into the Chancery of the High Commission to shoot the second senior most diplomat there and leave the building undetected to surrender at the nearest police station was an act stranger than fiction. After expressing deep regret over the deaths by shooting of one of our distinguished younger members of the Foreign Service, Pandil Jawaharlal Nehru stated in the Parliament of India that, I quote, such facts as we have apparently indicate no motive except that some person who is rather demented shot the diplomat as he was refused a visa for India. The Prime Minister also read out the message from the Indian High Commissioner in Ottawa, which stated, I quote, we are all shocked at the tragic end of a brilliant officer. The shock will be terrible for his wife, who is expecting a baby, unquote. The assailant, a Canadian of Yugoslav origin, Shani Farisi, was tried and sent away to a mental asylum for several years. The grieving family of Sri Shankarapillai, his wife, who was pregnant at the time, and two small children made their journey back, having had to cremate Sri Pillai in Ottawa, although they had wished to bring his mortal remains to India to give his parents a last glimpse of their beloved son. They were given only the minimum facilities for their travel, and they were received only by the manager of the guest house where they were put up in Mumbai. The immediate family made no complaints about these matters, but the larger family and his friends were disappointed that a distinguished diplomat was not given the honor he deserved, and his family was not looked after adequately. That will remain a blot on the history of the Ministry of External Affairs, which recorded the tragic event in its annual report of 1961-62 in two bland sentences. I hope the ministry has begun to deal with these tragedies, not in terms of rank, After his tragic death, my father felt that I had the duty to replace the most celebrated person in our village. Had it not been for him, I would never have aspired to be a diplomat. 
Many years later, after a military coup in Fiji, when I was high commissioner there, someone fired a shot at the British high commissioner's car. And when my father heard the news on the radio vaguely, he was sure that history had repeated itself. He, was, he felt the same when my wife and myself were grievously injured in an, in an armed attack in Nairobi later. Such was my father's belief that we were soulmates. But actually, my relationship with him was that of Ekalavya to Dronacharya, who passed on his skills to his unknown disciple without his knowledge. I'm grateful that I got this opportunity today to offer my Guru Dakshina to Sri Shankara Pillai, who shaped my destiny. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we are fortunate to have uh, Ms. Radha Pillai, daughter of Sri K.S. Pillai with us today. And I invite uh, Ms. Pillai to kindly address the gathering. Scott, today is a day when I have started believing in miracles. But what I am witnessing here now is a miracle indeed. But this miracle did not occur spontaneously. It is the result of the untiring efforts and initiative taken by Ambassador Srinivasan, by His Excellency, the High Commissioner, by the IFS fraternity, and of course, the staff, the mission in Ottawa, put in so much hard work to organize a function honoring a young diplomat who was assassinated inside the High Commission's premises 60 years ago. And if this is not a miracle, what is? Today is also the day when my faith in justice is When my father was assassinated, yes, I am the daughter of a diplomat. I don't think we realized that he would be the first martyr of the Indian Foreign Service, even though he died in the line of duty. His death caused a big stir back home in India. Questions were asked in Parliament. The media, the media coverage. And in time, life returned to normal. And we accepted our loss. So when this acknowledgement is given to him six decades later, I can only say I am so happy that justice has been done to his memory. And for this, thank the Ministry of External Affairs, especially Honorable Foreign Service. Many people have asked me of what I remember about that day. Well, I do remember it was a beautiful spring afternoon. And as usual, I walked home from school at about 3.30. Uh, we lived in Alta Vista Drive. Those who were in Ottawa would be familiar with that. And I attended Richmond High. And I was surprised when I was met at the door by the then High Commissioner's wife. The High Commissioner at that time, Sri Bhian Chakravarti. She hugged me tight, held me, and told me, rather, you have to be brave for your mother and your brother. Your father has met with an accident. Well, 
I don't know whether I was brave or not. Or I was only 15. My mother was pregnant, seven months pregnant, and she was shell-shocked and in a daze. My little brother Krishnan was just five years old and totally lost and bewildered. But I do know that we got through it. We flew home with my father's ashes. And three months later, my mother gave birth to a baby boy. Uh, we seem to have lost your audio, ma'am. I, I do not know what is that. Uh, we can hear you now. Okay, okay. Um, as I was saying, I'm not saying that we came through the audio unscathed and the, the event unscathed. But, in fact, I think we are all still scarred by the tragedy, even today. But the important thing is that we made it and we survived as a family with our bonds intact. Today is not a day to let the shadow of April 19, 1961 fall on us. April 19, 2021, the day right feeling pride and fulfillment. It is a day of heartfelt thanksgiving, not only for our family and our friends, but for all those who knew and loved, respected and admired, were inspired by and motivated by my father. And on behalf of all of them, I acknowledge with gratitude this heartwarming tribute to a hitherto unsung art for Karthi Shankara. Thank you all once again and Jai Hind. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your memories. Uh, we are lucky to have two more uh, Pillay siblings with us. Uh, may I now invite uh, Mr. Krishna Shankar Pillay uh, to say a few words. You will have to unmute yourself, sir. Even a single conversation with him. What remains are images of him returning from work and for a five-year-old kid returning uh, coming home one day with a new blue and white car soon after we reached Canada and most vivid of all a waxy face lying in a coffin surrounded by white flowers that's pretty much what I now remember of my father people live on in memory in the memories of others who knew them even here I have not been very fortunate Apart from the family, I have met only a very few from his teaching days in university college and none at all from the IFS. But people also live, in, live on in things they leave behind. In our case, things lovingly preserved by our mother, starting with the school and college records, the published paper on poison distribution.
we seem to have lost your audio sir a personal letter can you hear me hello yes we can hear you now yeah a personal letter from the then foreign secretary sri kps menon welcoming him to the ifs and cautioning him that if he wanted to get rich the ifs was not the place for him then there were albums with photographs of famous people visiting whichever country he was serving in family anecdotes based on this faded black and white photos like the time when the lok sabha speaker wanted a lota in his hotel room in porto spain then there was a personal diary i came across as a child I remember flipping through it to look at june 23 1956 the day i was born to see what he had written on that day these are little things that we had retained from his memories his ifs training involved a year at cambridge and a sort of internship in paris and there was a there was a college tie among my mother's collection from st john's which my mother told me that i could not wear unless i went to the same college to understand the person we have to understand the times he came from as well both his parents had lost their spouses and had married again one thinks of the liberal attitudes that must have been prevalent 100 years ago which made this possible my grandfather apparently used to refer to your children my children and our son so we seem to have lost your audio again hello hello we can hear you now sir please go ahead okay. he was a university first in mathematics and had published a paper on poisson distribution when he was 23 as was a custom then the first ranker was immediately appointed a lecturer i am told that he is also an active sportsman and a lover of poetry my mother was a student at university university college apparently an arranged marriage but who knows what was in their minds i have a copy of the wedding invitation sent out by him the invitation was from him not from his parents which also tells me something about the person he was like sri srinivasan mentioned there was a there's always a tinge of sadness that he was forgotten by the country we seem to have lost your audio again sir this possible if only i only wish a mother who had passed away just 11 years later was alive today to see this thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, we have another pille sibling and uh, may i request mr sankara pille to kindly say a few words please not surprisingly therefore i have no memories of him to share like most people aware of him out here today i have only heard stories about him from family and his peers this diamond anniversary also reminds me that in 3 months it would be time to celebrate 60 years of my own passage on this planet uh, it has been a long time 
long enough to have forgotten her death in a foreign land. That it is being remembered even after so many years must mean that he must have positively and intimately touched enough number of lives. <laughs> like my siblings, I am grateful to Ambassador Srinivasan, His Excellency Harshwardhan Singla, High Commissioner Bissaria, As we all live, fast moving, risky, turbulent, was For the fry, this is pretty normal, having experienced nothing else. So it was with me. It was a normal that I was doing. Most and examined in the days. It's my mother being consumed by cancer when I was just then. She told me that I was infinitely more tough that age. So I would have found that as a bitter tragedy in my life. But the young summer must be born and complete the complete with the challenges posed by the river and other predators. Uh, for helping me on that, I must be grateful for the family support system that I had. My brother was just five years older to me. To him, I'm grateful for especially ensuring that I have never lacked guidance and direction, especially in the early days in education and early career. And to my sister for, for being the glue which held us all together. To them, I give a huge thumbs up. Uh, thank you, sir, for your kind words and your memories. Uh, the event today was uh, co-hosted by the IFS Association, and I now call upon Secretary of the Association, uh, Gloria Gangte, to kindly give the vote of thanks. Gloria, you're on, please. Thank you, Anshuman. It is my privilege and honor to deliver this vote of thanks on this. Uh, we seem to have lost your uh, feed, Gloria.
who very bravely stood by her mother and her sibling at that time. Thank you for your very emotive uh, remarks. Mr. Krishna Shankar Pillai, we thank you for your intervention and also to thank you to Mr. Shankar, Shankar Pillai. We also thank all the members of the Indian Foreign Service Association who are present here uh, today and joining us on this very important uh, occasion in which we honor our colleague. Please, family members of Mr. Shankar Pillai, I'd like to assure you that the Foreign Service Association today is an organization which continues to build on the memories of our uh, predecessors. And hence, we will always be honoring those who have gone before us because our very own existence is built on the lives that they have given. So thank you very much, all of you, for having joined us today. And thank you for, uh, once again, to High Commission of India, Ottawa, for ideating this initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gloria. It remains for me to thank everyone who was part of this really beautiful and moving uh, memorial ceremonies. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Thank you especially to Radha Ji, KS, and Shankara Pillai for your eloquent and beautiful memories. Uh, listening to you, one thought of how this huge tragedy visited this young family 60 years ago and how well you coped with it uh, with, by this, with this huge tragedy. And thank you, Ambassador Srinivasan, for such a, a wonderful statement, for bringing this memory to us in the first place, and for uh, very frankly telling us what we did wrong all those 60 years ago. But thank you, everyone, for being part of this. We are delighted uh, that we were able to host this event, uh, this very special event. We will share with you the video that we made. We will share with you this on Facebook where we had a technical problem. But the memory of uh, Sri Pillai will now not be forgotten. His sacrifice will not be forgotten. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.